3.3 Make Decisions on Reasonable Adjustments with the Candidate based on the candidate's needs and characteristics. So in order to make some decisions, it's a good idea to have some different support tools ready to offer the candidate for their disability. This has to be negotiated in consultation with the registered training organisation, the learner and any specialist support personnel that might be involved in the process. It can't be expensive or too complex for the operations of assessing. So that's where the reasonableness factor comes in. Now you might be able to provide materials ahead of class time to give them more time to prepare. You might um, arrange for interpreters or perhaps some sign language if they're hearing impaired. Uh, you might have the learning materials in electronic format, similar to what we do here with the e-learning where everything is narrated. Um, it might be able through the e-learning to be self-paced if they need longer time, give them extensions for the deadlines um, and allow them to go back like we do. With your YouTubes you can pause it and rewind it and replay it at any time. And perhaps some sort of electronic format that has a zoom view. So usually our PowerPoints, Word documents, they all have the ability to zoom. Even the YouTubes can be blown up for a whole screen. Now this is where e-learning is really good or what they call online learning because you can pace it yourself. So it's not just for people with disabilities but it's, it's people that might require a little bit more time or a little bit more repetition. I'm certainly the, the style of learner that likes to have something repeated over and over. Now people with low vision difficulties uh, you need to make sure that you have a very strong contrast. So your text needs to contrast with the background. So at Evoke, uh, we have a policy here where any PowerPoint um, is always done on a white background slide and it's usually in a black text. The, the main text structure is in black unless there's some colour coding for a purpose. Uh, the only time we differentiate from that is if we have like a, a chapter slide um, which is where you, you've got those bold orange slides and that's when we would be going into a new element but that doesn't really contain much text. So there's luminance contrast ratios and you need to be aware of that when you're looking at the contrast. And there's a lot of information about that on this website. You can actually go to this link down here and find out more about that. This gives you a bit of an idea with the ratios. So people with a, an AA or a 2040 vision, you need a 4.5 to 1 ratio for the luminance. 7 to 1 ratio for a 2080 vision, which is called a AAA vision. And usually when you're looking at things like this, you would be working with the person with a sight impairment and they'd be providing more information to you. There is also a link on the website there. Hearing impaired, I've given you a link here to Auslan, which is the Australian language um, site uh, and this is where you can look at a sign bank of different words where there's you know where that there's actually a little quick film clip that will sign the particular word out and the one that I've given you here is the word assessment but if that isn't loading very well you just go back to um, you know the dictionary words and then hit the slash and you can enter your own word there so that's a that's a handy little link to have with physical disabilities, there are keyboards that they can purchase if they can only type left-handed and there's keyboards if they can only type right-handed. There's also um, two finger options for keyboards and here we have alternate keyboard link there on the Microsoft site. Alternatively, they can just ask for some assistance from a carer to type their responses so long as the information is authentically coming from the candidate and that would just simply be a conversation 
with the carer to maintain authenticity. A couple of other links there for you. You'll see it all there to access on the PowerPoint. Magnifiers for sight impaired. There's voice recognition to text. Uh, this is where I might just mention as well. Nuance, N-U-A-N-C-E, has a new software product, uh, Dragon 12, which is very advanced now in voice to text. A uh, little bit costly, but there might be some government grants that learners can get directly uh, to purchase it a little bit more cheaply. So that's where you can actually dictate into your iPhone or smartphone and that will work as a recording device and change it to text. So, you know, there's some really amazing things out there, little dictaphones, digital note takers as well. There's some disability support information there, a government site. This is the legislation around it, Disability Services Act of 2006. We also had the 2005 legislation around disability and education that we've mentioned in a previous lecture where you need to have inclusive practice. So it's all about reasonable adjustment, reasonable adjustment. A modification or change that gives you the same opportunities in training as a person without a disability. Adjustments need to be reasonable. That is, they need to consider the needs of everyone involved so that no one is disadvantaged. This includes other learners. So there's lots of information we have on our website under troubleshooting for um, reasonable adjustment and applications for adjustment. Now, specialist support can include third party, you know, carers, interpreters, specialist support people. And also there's that W3C um, site as well that you can have a look at. <clears throat> 